Hey everyone, this is uh, Daniel, and today I want to demonstrate to you this new power app that I made, um, and it has a combination of a uh, little bit of enhanced uh, user interface or UI or user experience or UX. Um, so uh, what I've done is in the back end, I've still connected it to the same SharePoint list I used um, for this uh, Lego Mixel series demo that I had done in the past. Um, in the past, I basically demonstrated how you can connect uh, a few galleries so that based on the selection of one gallery, the other ones get uh, filtered. Um, that is still uh, over here, and I've still actually connected to the same two lists that I'm getting pulled from SharePoint Online. Uh, but what I've done is I've been able to take it a step further. Um, so let me just demonstrate all of that to you right now, and then we'll open up the app, and there's a few things that I want to point out to you. Um, so over here, this, the first section of the app, um, is pretty much the same. There is a gallery over here. There's one and two galleries. And over here, there is an edit form, which I am filtering based on the selections that are done. So what I did was, um, right now in Lego Mixels, there's nine different uh, series of that available. So say if I selected the, uh, uh, say you go with the series number five, then you see that this one has automatically updated, which is a gallery over here. And that gallery is connected to a SharePoint list. Uh, and then over here, if I select any one of these um, mixels, say if I select this one over here, then it automatically goes ahead and filters, the gives me the information over here, and it also provides the images. Uh, this was something I demonstrated in the past. I just changed the design a little bit. Um, so this was one section over here. Uh, now say I want to go ahead and take it to the next level, where I want to edit some of these things over here. Uh, now I was able to change the user interface a little bit uh, where I can actually go ahead and now click on the top left, and it goes ahead and slides out. Um, and so all of this over here, this sliding out, everything was done based on a lot of variables uh, and using the timer uh, um, control over there. Uh, so based on the specific timer control, which in this section I kept it for 600, um, the value 600, um, it, it's using that timer to actually go ahead back and forth. Um, and you'll actually see that several of the... Uh, mobile apps that you use today, uh, they have this functionality. They will have this you know, um, uh, setting functionality on the top left or on the top right. And when you click on it, it actually slides out. It gives a really good professional user interface experience because now all of this is done directly. Um, and it gives you the, se the several layers that you need, um, but it all keeps it in that same real estate value, which is the mobile uh, screen ratio. Uh, but let's not just stop over here. Uh, what I wanted to do now is, um, by default, I'm getting the options to go ahead and select uh, the nine different series available. But say if I just want, you know, if this is an app which I give to a customer who comes to the store, or if I want to give it to the end users in the company for whatever other you know customized product that you build, and I don't want them to see all of them, I just want them to see, say, number two or number five. And I just come over here in the back end, which is the settings side or the enhancement side, and I go to this filter series. And the filter series has got this really uh, good drop down, again, um, good user interface and user uh, enhancement. And actually, there's a custom um, uh, blog, I mean, the blog I've written, which actually provides a template like that. Uh, and that's what I'm simply using over here. So in the back end, I'm going to go ahead and say click on that series six. And the moment I click over here, it has automatically enhanced, I mean, filtered on the front. Um, so it, the point I wanted to make was that what you see in the back end over here, they are not just images. Um, they are completely all interrelated, which makes the UI and the, and the enhancement so much more user friendly. And it makes it look very professional as well. Cause that was my whole objective over here is that we've been able to show how power apps can do some really good, um, you know, uh, customizations and good, uh, you know, uh, functionality. But let's now make that look a lot more cleaner. Um, so what I did was I went ahead and filtered it down to just six over here. So let me go back now to the front section. And that's what you can see. See, the button is just down to six. Um, and now I have an inf interface over here where I can now go ahead and click on any one of them. And it still goes ahead and shows up the, uh, you know, the information over here plus the image. Same thing if I click on the other one. You know, all these images change over here. Um, I can go back to my filter. I can now reset it so that all of them show up. I can then go back to, say, just two. Um, go back over here. Um, and, and as you can notice that even though I did not collapse it back, uh, but because the front section uh, was coming in, it directly just goes ahead and overlaps it. So it doesn't, you know, um, give it this, uh, the back one still doesn't become visible because the top one is the one which is more um, prominent. 
And then again, since I selected two in the back end, um, now I can just go ahead and focus on two. And based on the selection I did over here, it does it does that over here. But let's not stop over here. Um, what if, for example, there is, you know, this app is used, say, by a Lego store um, for customers who come in and um, you have a new Lego series come out and it's, say, the Lego series number nine, and you want your customers only to see that. Um, so that was the easy part, right? We can just go back in the back end over here. I can filter that out or I could just go ahead and down and, and click on that. Um, and, and, you know, we can pick on basically any other ones. Uh, but the cost of that is a little higher. So you don't want your customers to be alarmed by that cost. Um, so initially, I, I just want that cost to be hidden and then show everything else, you know, the pieces, instructions, packaging, all of that. So for that, I can now go into my setting and I can click on that and you watch how this works. The setting comes from the bottom. It makes sure that it, it only takes the real estate of this much so it doesn't block all of that over here. Um, and I can go ahead and hide the cost. And the moment I did that, you see that got uh, hidden over here. I click on this button and that got hidden. So I'm going to go back over here. Let's go back. And now, you know, you can go ahead and basically provide this app to any of your customers or, you know, anybody else. Uh, in this case, I'm using Lego. You could have a completely separate scenario. Um, and now they're able to go ahead and just focus on all the available mixels for this series. Um, and they can see all the great enhancements available. Uh, or the great new, new functions available for this one, but they just don't get alarmed by the price. Um, and that's something that you guys can do. Um, in addition, or finally, uh, one thing we can do is, um, again, in the back end, um, I was able to give it a little bit more, um, you know, great I mean, look and feel, enhance that. Because uh, instead of the red, I want to say add the blue. And then what I can do is the blue directly affects um, the whole thing over here, it affects the front because I was able to use the variables. And, and Audrey had actually written a really good um, uh, video on that and uh, some uh, blogs. So I was able to take some other uh, examples she took from there. Uh, but it, it goes ahead and makes it so dynamic because right now it's blue. Um, I can always go back and I can change that to green and that changes. See, it affects everything over here um, and that, you know, you can go ahead and change that as well. Um, the other options I provided is in the... Um, Instead of using the filter series, you can actually search directly and use that over here. That's another filtering option I provided. And then the tile was just another functionality that I showed uh, because what I wanted to do was that I wanted to make sure that since I'm focusing only on the user interface and the user experience, that the entire um, uh, height should remain consistent so it doesn't you know, drop down below. Um, that's why I made sure that the height, or, or in this case, it's the Y um, value doesn't exceed beyond what's available here. And it should be very consistent because right now I just want to go ahead and filter based on the mixels. What if I drop the series? This one should go ahead and dynamically, um, you know, just uh, uh, go ahead and hit the same amount over there. Uh, basically, the, the gap is what I was mentioning. The gap is the one that needs to be always consistent because if I click on that one, um, this gap will automatically be filled um, and then so on and so forth. Uh, so those are the examples I gave over here. Um, I also went ahead and demonstrated that this is all, um, you know, in, in just one power app. Um, I can either click on that or I can click on this. Um, in the settings side, the section just comes straight from the bottom. And I, over here, I have the option to change the color. I can hide the cost. I can even hide the number of pieces. And all of this is interrelated, uh, which is directly happening here. <laughs> so now let's go ahead and take a look at the app actually in the back end. Um, so let me log into my Power Apps, and I'm going to use the web designer um, in the browser. And I just want to show you a few things. First of all, uh, when this app opens up, uh, what you'll be seeing is that all of this is happening in one screen. I haven't opened up a whole bunch of screens or anything else. It's all happening on one screen. So let me open up the app, and I'll show you that. So I made sure that my app, I'm in the correct environment where this app is, and that's the app over here. So I'm gonna click on that, and in the app, I am going to now edit that in the web, which is in the web browser, but it's called the web studio. It's loading. And so here's all the, uh, basically what the app looks. Um, as you can see, the whole thing was all done in one screen. That was the first emphasis I wanted to show. 
Um, over here, I went ahead and grouped them into very specific things. Um, and I can just show you that the grouping was all done based on what was on the home side, which is this guy over here. I call that as the home one. Um, then there was the settings section. And that's that's another thing that I wanted to demonstrate to you guys so that you can actually take the ideas from here. Um, as you can see for the filter and for the search and the look, um, I used the example where, um, for example, in the filter, um, this is the section where I used that I went ahead and expanded and I collapsed the, the Y coordinates over here. Uh, actually, it was the X coordinates um, for the dropping and, 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 and collapsing again. But for increasing the width, um, I actually used the width. So when you can go to the width section over here, I'm actually first letting the whole height come up and then the width is, is getting expanded. And that was done based on its own um, uh, timer over here. And so that's basically the whole example that I used. And there's a, a template that I've already provided in the Power Apps community forum over there. So you can download that and, and experiment with that. Uh, but that's what I wanted to show you that this section over here, um, I'm actually collapsing, I mean, expanding and collapsing using the width. Now for the settings that you see down over here, um, I am not collapsing um, the width. I'm actually keeping the width and the height the same. It's the X, I mean, it's the Y coordinate that I'm changing. So if you go now, we go and look at the settings group and we'll take a look at in the settings group, say it is the entire uh, label available. Uh, we'll go to this full settings label setting screen yep that's what it is um over here just make sure i've got the correct one settings settings label yeah i think that should work um over here when we go in and look at the y you can see that the amount i've gone ahead and made sure that the whole thing will either come up or down and I'm not doing any collapsing in the width. So when you go and when we go and look at the height um, or in the width over here, you see there's nothing happening in the width. The width actually stays consistent. The same thing you will see in the height. Um, that will be consistent as well. The number stays consistent. The whole thing that is changing is it's actually the uh, the height and it, it's uh, y coordinates is the main thing that's changing over there which is a little different from these ones over here because I'm actually do expanding. Um, I'm making the width of it a little dynamic. In this case, I've made the width and the height very consistent. It's the Y coordinates that's making uh, dynamic. And that's because this screen's real estate value um, or the screen ratio um, remains consistent. Uh, that means if I take this guy down, it's by default just hidden. Um, so you don't actually see it in, in any way. That's why I was able to just make sure it slides up and down. Um, the other thing was um, in in now the screen section over here, I can go ahead and click on that, it'll come up. Um, I went ahead and used um, a lot of variables. Um, in this case, when we go back to the screen, um, when we go on start, you can see that there's a whole series of variables that I'm using. And I'm also using the clear collect, a collection that I've created because uh, that's what's helping me go ahead and use and change the colors over here. So based on um, the name and the value, I'm using that to change. So um, in the beginning itself, right when the app is on start, I created a whole bunch of variables because these variables are what's helping me to use the expand and the collapse and making the settings and the timers run. Because uh, for each of these, there are timers over there. Um, so that was something in the, in the beginning of the screen. Um, also, uh, based on what you select over here, because if you select any of this button over here or the checkbox, it directly affects the visibility of uh, this one over here. So for example, in the settings, I mean, in this checkbox over here, that's called the settings screen hide uh, cost box, based on what is selected over here, uh, this entire screen will get, I mean, obviously this is getting filtered, but now if I go to view, the visibility of that is by default, um, Oh, not there, it's on this one here. The visibility of that one is based on the value of that checkbox over here. Same thing happens for um, this one, uh, this checkbox over here, which is actually showing the, the cost. 
its visibility is also dependent on the value of this checkbox over here. And the same thing I did for the pieces one as well. Um, the last thing I wanted to show you was how the color was changing. Um, there's actually the blog which Audrey has talked about, so you can also look over there uh, for more details. Um, the one thing in Power Apps uh, which made it work uh, was I set all the values to a collection, and I'm just storing that on, on Power Apps itself. Um, that's why I, mean, and I just showed to you when the Power App was on start mode, I created a collection over there, and then I'm using that variables to change the color. So right now, when I go to select on this guy over here, the top one, and if I go to fill, that fill has a condition that based on the color theme radio um, control over here, which is that one, um, if its value that I've selected is, say, for example, dark red, then I'm looking up the collection that I have, and I'm checking to see if anything has red, and if it is, if it matches the selection over here, then go ahead and get the value. Um, that value was a separate column altogether in the collection, and so that's all I've been doing, is over here I went, go ahead and check, is it dark red, is it dark green, is it dark uh, blue, and if it is, go ahead and get that value, and that value actually matches the, collect, uh, the color over here. Um, so this was just an overview once again that um, it works really well um, and it gives you that enhanced, really uh, polished user interface um, as well as the user, um, um, you know, working functionality of that, um, the experience for that, the UX and the UI. Um, because the Power Up by it itself works so easily with all the controls and functions and everything else you can do. Uh, but now you can use the combinations of timers, variables, expressions to actually give you um, this modern look over here. Um, so hope I, this, this just gives you a good example of how I'm able to make this great user interface. Um, and then you guys can take this as an example and bring take it to a whole different level. And as always, uh, what you learn, share it with the community. Thanks.